Has this ever happened to you? You've gone into your Apple TV, tried to change something, and you've forgotten what the passcode is. Then this video is for you. Last year, I tried to do something on my Apple TV, and I completely forgot what my passcode was. Normally, I don't use restrictions, but my children had started installing new apps and messing around with my settings, and unfortunately, they'd learned the passcode. This meant that I had to change my passcode again, and what happened was I changed my passcode to something that I then promptly forgot what it was. I needed a way to regain control. When I searched online for a solution, all I found was it could be done with a factory reset. Obviously this meant starting from scratch, and this wasn't something I wanted to do. I would try it, but only as a last resort. So for a while I tried manually entering different codes using the remote, and this was really slow. Then it dawned on me, the remote on my iPhone actually had a built-in keyboard. This allowed you to type in the number you wanted rather than trying to select the correct one. This was much faster, but still slow. The Apple TV wasn't slowing down between retries. If you've ever tried to guess the passcode on an iPhone or an iPad, then you'll know that after a few attempts, it starts to slow you down. After a few more attempts, it will lock the device until a few minutes have passed. If you persist in getting the code wrong, eventually it will get slower and slower. The Apple TV didn't do this. So why was this important? It meant I could automate the guessing. I knew nothing about how to interface with the Apple TV, but I knew that it must be possible as I could do it from my phone and there are also other remotes available from the App Store. I set about scouring the internet for any open source software that had any form of remote control for an Apple TV. I found a node project called Apple TV X. It gave you controls like play, pause, and the usual media controls, but no keyboard. I figured if it can send controls like those, then I could modify it to send numbers. As it turns out, this project was a great base for that. And this project is the result of me doing a lot of trial and error. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is check out the repo, link in the description, and you're gonna to have to follow the installation instructions. So you need to clone the repository, install the dependencies. And once you've done all that, we can start guessing the passcode. But before we do any of that, the first thing we're going to need to do is set a passcode on this Apple TV. You can see the interface you're forced to use if you use an Apple TV remote. You have to select the number and then click on it. Incidentally, this is how my children learned what the passcode was. And anyone in the room would also be able to see this. Now that we have the passcode set, that means the restrictions are on. If you were to leave this menu and go back in, you would then be asked for the passcode. To use my application, the first thing you need to do is pair it with your Apple TV. This is proving to the Apple TV that the software is allowed to control it. We do this by typing in the same code that's displayed on the screen and entering it into the app. Once we've done this, the secret is saved to a pair.json file so that you don't need to do this again. Now that we've authorized the application and set a passcode, we can go about trying to recover it. We can do this by typing the command apple tv guess. The command is gonna start from 0000 and count up by adding one each time. The Apple TV will reject passcodes until it succeeds. Unfortunately, this app does not know when it succeeds, so you'll need to be vigilant. When I originally did this, I recorded my TV and computer using my phone. Then I could play back the last minute and try to figure out where it got to. If I didn't know exactly where it got to, then I could modify the code to change the 000 number so that it started for somewhere closer to the end number, but obviously before it. And then I could start the process again. 
every attempt the code takes, it's taking roughly about a second, and you can see that it's not being slowed down, which is great. I can see why there's no reason to slow people down. The chances are your Apple TV is never gonna leave your house. Whereas your iPhone or iPad needs a lot more security because they are easier to steal. Now watch as the script approaches the set passcode, you'll see the screen change when it gets to the actual correct passcode. I didn't notice until it got to 126, but hopefully that's enough of a reminder to let you know what the original code was. It's a small window, so it would be easy enough to go back and try from say 100, 110. If we wanted to start it from a different number, then if you look at the code in this bin index.json on line 123, there's a commented out block of code that would skip the counting from 300. All you need to do is uncomment it and put in whichever number you desire. In this example, it would start from 300 rather than from zero. I fought the original project and there is a link in the description below. There is nothing to stop you from changing the code to try numbers in reverse, and you would do that by changing the order of the items in the array on line 223. However you change the code is up to you. I'm open to pull requests. If this video has helped you, then please give me a thumbs up. Let me know how you get on in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.